All right, I got a new nickname. I, I call people that uh, cape up for Colin Kaepernick the Kaepernicks. Now I have one for Lamar Jackson's group, the Jackson Hive. Mm. They, they all run around defending Lamar Jackson. They talk the Baltimore Ravens into doing something stupid. He wasn't a first-round pick. The expectations on him are too elevated. That's why he's the focus of so much co uh, conversation. If he had been a third, fourth-round pick, no one would be running around talking about Lamar Jackson's a disappointment. But so far, he's been a disappointment, and he doesn't look like a guy that was worthy of the 32nd pick overall, the last pick of the first round. If I'm the Ravens, I'm concerned. He's not ready to be the backup quarterback. I'm a hive. Sorry. You're in the Jackson. Oh, yeah, I'm yeah, a hive, too. I'm, I'm a hive, there's no doubt about it. You know, we can't make this assessment off of a rookie quarterback who's only played two preseason games. The NFL, specifically a quarterback, is about development. And I've had this conversation before with both you, Jason, and you, Rob, about developing players and the urgency to win and how it's impossible, how hard it is to develop players in this league. You know, the college ranks don't, they don't, do not develop players the way that they used to. That means they come into the NFL needing more development, OTAs and 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 the Practice lack of a, the lack, lack of an off-season program squad. really hurts the development of players now. Um, you, none of these young quarterbacks that were drafted in the first round have have just torn it up. They've had times where they played well, times where they played bad. And the one thing that I see in Lamar Jackson is when he's on the move. He's a much more accurate passer. He's a better quarterback throwing the ball when he's on the move than he's than when he's in the quarter in, in the in the pocket. Oh, where and they want him to play. He's and that's, better where they don't want him to yeah, play. Yeah, but you have to develop that. First of all, re realize you got him in with the second and the third offensive line, which means that he don't have that much time. Feet, so. He doesn't have that much time to throw the ball. Feet, so. You gotta learn how to navigate the pocket, Jason. And listen, if he's a third or fourth round pick. You throw him on the practice squad or you let him develop naturally, but because of all this hype, people want him to beat out Joe Flacco, and he's just not ready. None of these I'm, young quarterbacks are beating out starting quarterbacks that they're playing against this year. Not a single one of them. I'm part of the hive, and I think this. Look, he's the closest thing to Randall Cunningham as, as there is. And if you remember Randall Cunningham, he came in, had his selected plays till, till a coach put him in on every third down. <laughs> It's a little shaky. <laughs> but then the next year, he got there under center at first down. He's like, dang, this is great. I got a few downs to go. But uh, the biggest thing is this guy's a special talent. And here's the thing, though. As we all know, he hasn't run any of the plays he's going to be running in his little packages to help the Ravens win in the regular season. He's going to have his own group of plays, and he's going to do fine in those plays. Right now, we never said he could read a defense. Nobody does up here. That he, can't, he can't read defense. That'll take time. But they do have time to develop this young, outstanding kid. In the meantime, he's going to scare the heck out of any defensive coach because Who's he's going to come be your in. Who's going to backup quarterback? RG3. RG3. Is, but this, number one, are, should the Ravens be concerned? Absolutely not. No. Just because it's too early to be concerned. It, it's too early. He's running Joe Flacco's offense. If he was the starting quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens, they would tailor an offense that fits him and suits him to give him a better chance to have success now. If he was running an RPO system, run pass option, where some similar to what he ran in college, he would have more success. Because he is the backup or the third team quarterback, this is Flacco's offense. If he becomes a starter, they will tailor an offense if they're smart coaches that suits well, they him, and he'll it. have success. They already have it. From day one, they've been putting his plays in. It's, well, they need, know, to, they need to run it because been. it's well, going to give him the confidence to show him, I can do this. If, they, if they don't run it, he's going to lose confidence in himself. Like, man, this NFL is a lot harder than I thought. He's in developmental mode, and he's going to have to learn to run Joe Flacco's offense, not just the RPO. I don't agree with taking young college guys' offense and bringing it to the NFL. You have to. Because the, the defenses catch up too quick. He'll have one or two years of, of, of success, just like RG3, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden, the bottom will and fall And when out. the defense catches up, he's ready now to run an NFL-style offense because he's mature enough to understand that. You just got to get his feet wet so that he understands NFL coverages, the windows are tighter, the guys are faster. No, 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 no! Everybody's asked me that a ton of times. Why? I'm going to tell you the reason why. We're learning a new system, and I think Terod Taylor needs every rep he can get with the ones. I think Baker's doing outstanding, 
with the twos. If something happens and we need to put him in there, we will. We will. Right now, that hasn't happened. I, 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 here again. <laughs> Talking about a guy drafted at the top of the draft, the number one overall right. pick by your new general manager, president, John Dorsey. And you want to go all in on Tarod Taylor? When you're playing, you're, and I get it, Hughes coaching for his job. He wants to win six, seven, eight games maybe, save himself. I think his better plan for saving himself is developing Baker Mayfield. The guy, your GM, just went out on a limb and said he's the number one pick in the draft. I would want to, if I want to keep my job, I want to show the, the general manager and the guy that's going to eventually decide my fate, I can develop your guy the number one pick in the draft, I, I think he was making a mistake here. Traditionally, I believe that when a player is picked in the top five, that he's that, 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 that the organization is saying that he's NFL ready now, he's a starter right now. Yep. Um, but when the Cleveland Browns decide to sign Tyrod Taylor, Tyrod. Tyrod Taylor, and pay him $16 million, you mean to tell me he's going to be a $16 million backup? No, because... They had already determined that that Terod was going to be the starter. You know, at the end of the day, John Dorsey and Baker Mayfield are hitched at the hip. They're tied together because that's his quarterback. John Dorsey didn't hire Hugh Jackson to be the head coach of the Cleveland Browns, okay? I have no problem with this because on the peripheral, what nobody's really talking about is that Hugh Jackson's on the hot seat. If they have another one-win season... He's out of there. So I have no problem with him going with the guy that gives him the best chance to win, to save his job, and to give him extra years to develop the players they have, bring in more talent, and move forward from there. I have no problem with him doing this. I, I think, um, I know he had one win. We had zero wins last year. But, I mean, he ought to be on the hot seat. I mean, you know, he, he made it this far, which is, you know, unbelievable. To be honest, you know, one in 32 uh, I think we could have all done better than that. But, uh, you know, I think I think this. I mean, I, I think this. It's an advertisement. I, I, really. it's no, no hey, well, hey, I've been there. Great Go fans. Ahead. They love them. Stopped anybody <laughs> since I left. But the bottom line is uh, this kid should have some, you know, work with the ones because he is going to be the backup, no question about it, until they do make a move. Right now, uh, you know, I love Taylor, uh, you know, as a, as a kid because he's going to compete. He's going he's gonna to be in there. Uh, he's going to protect the team. And look, with all these first-round picks they've got on defense, they got to start stopping people, and that's their best chance to win. But Baker Mayfield should get some time with the ones because, look, you never know what's going to happen. You know, Taylor got knocked out last year, and then he got benched, uh, you know, not his own fault, yep. but he's been injured before. This kid's going to play sooner rather than later. The only thing, I don't see the redeeming qualities of the young man. <laughs> 